Hello Capricorn, welcome to your weekly reading for July 15th to the 21st. This is for Capricorn and Capricorn Rising. We're going to jump right into it Capricorn. As you can see, it is a loaded, loaded week. We're kicking it off with Mars conjuncting Uranus. We're ending it with the full moon in your sign. Capricorn, this is going to be a really big week for you. I'm going to walk you through this. July 15th, the first thing I want you to know, this is on Monday. We have Mars conjuncting Uranus in Taurus. Now, I've talked about this in your weekly readings and uh, even your monthly forecast. Mars and Uranus are in a Venus ruled sign right now. So there is a little, they're bringing a little bit of disruption to that harmony. You're going to feel a little bit of a shakeup. That's what Mars conjuncting Uranus does. Conjunctions, remember, very, very powerful aspects. Now, what makes this day a little bit more like, oh, uh, is the fact that this is going to be, the moon's going to be in Scorpio. That adds a little bit more intensity here. So, there really could be something here where, uh, you know, Uranus is at rebellious energy, revolutionary, radical, but Uranus is also freedom and, and liberation. There could be something about you that you're ready, ready to break free from around this time. The other possibility is that there is likely something happening in your life that goes a little like what just happened. All right. And it's because Mars conjuncting Uranus is in your fifth house of love romance, relationships, family, children, joy, pleasure, creativity, even okay, creativity, recreation. So a couple things that could uh, apply here. But then when you throw in the moon, the moon actually rules your 11th house. So something with a friend could happen like a group that you belong to just, you know, with a conjunction like this, especially with the Uranus at play, you really just don't know what to expect. Uranus is the uh, planet of surprises, unpredictability, uh, uh, just uh, the unexpected. It's like, um, like a baby reveal party. You don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl. You don't know if the magician standing over there is going to pull out a rabbit or, you know, uh, the flowers. You just really, really don't know. So I just want you to be very, very, very aware this day. But like I said, it is likely going to be something that maybe something just doesn't bring you fun uh, anymore. And you realize that and you're like, I want to maximize all the joy to my life. This is my moment. This is this rebellious energy inside you. This is your Sandra D moment. You saw her at the end of Greece. Okay. So that's tra and she, she got what she wanted. She got what she wanted. So, uh, really could be your transformation story here at play. All right. Just keep that in mind. This could be a big awakening for you. Uh, and if you are ready to make a big change, a lot of y'all listen, this is a type of aspect, especially if you feel stuck in a situation, here you go. This could be uh, where you break free. This is where something happens. It could show you the way. All right. So uh, you made that science experiment. All right. Back in, you know, elementary school, the volcano, the baking powder and the vinegar. Right. So you got it. There's a little bit of rumbles before the lava flows. That's this conjunction. You get a little bit of rumbles after. OK. So with that said, there is a bit of shifting gears around this day. This is one of the biggest aspects not only of the month, but of the year, okay, of the year as well. So just remember to direct your energy at a high vibration. Now, here's the other thing. You may already be feeling it. You may already be, this is a powerful conjunction. You may already be feeling it days before, all right? So remember, just let that release happen. Uh, it's all about you. I want you to really, really do what's going to, I want you to follow your bliss. I want you to follow your bliss, but just know that this could be a day with Mars conjuncting Uranus as well. Uh, it's just like, this is an aspect where it is like accident prone to. So I just want you to be very mindful this day. Always be aware, always be aware in the moment. All right. Now on Tuesday, not on this calendar, Mercury moves into shadow. And the reason I'm bringing about bringing this up is because Mercury will go retrograde. I mentioned this in your for, uh, monthly forecast, all of August, pretty much all of August. All right. Now, when Mercury goes into shadow, it's I think I made this analogy. This is the day, Tuesday, July 16th, Mercury takes an ambient. So he's still awake. He's still awake. But he's a little. Mm, and then August is when, boom, he, he, it goes full retrograde, uh, takes a little nap there. All right. So you may start feeling a slowdown. You may start feeling a slowdown around this time. So put all your ducks in a row, everything that you want. Okay. Everything that you want, things that you need to put in order. I would recommend doing it. Now, this is also a day where we actually have a water trine this day. So moon in Scorpio, sun in Cancer, Neptune in Pisces. You could feel emotionally charged, uh, even 
really, really intuitive, highly intuitive this day. Now, Thursday, July 18th, Sun, Sex, Hiding, Uranus, okay? Here's your breakthrough. Here's the breakthrough you wanted. This is really absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, I really love this day, Uranus. Remember, it's all about those breakthroughs, freedom, uh, the unexpected. But this is a beautiful, harmonious aspect. So it could be really surprising things that uh, come around this time. Maybe something with money. There's so much money ha things happening for you. And I'll talk more about that. You've, you've got a big aspect with money. Uh, but there could be something with finances uh, around this time. Okay. There could be something with finances. And then again, with like family, joy, pleasure, love, all those things that I mentioned earlier. Now, uh, also Mercury will be in Leo actually trining Chiron this day. Chiron, uh, uh, trining Chiron in Aries. This is, Chiron is a wounded healer. So this is healing energy. Uh, doubly so because the sun is still in cancer. Remember that intuitive energy, nurturing energy, a lot of healing. You may do some like healing work this day. Really great day. Uh, you could feel very compassionate, uh, doing some shadow work as well. This might be a big time for you because Mercury and Leo, remember Venus is also in Leo. That is your eighth house. So uh, a lot of shadow work you could be doing around this time. Now on Saturday, July 20th, we have Mars X like Neptune. A lot of things, a lot of aspects happening at 29 degrees. This is at 29 degrees. Remember, Neptune, 29 degrees retrograde. Really big deal. But this is absolutely amazing. I love this. I love this. I 1,000% I love this. It is uh, heightened compassion, heightened intuition, heightened even just healing, just spirituality. You're definitely going to feel this day. A lot of creative energy around this time. So really, really use this. Remember, Mars is all about taking that action. Now, you see another big aspect happening this day. Uh, transit, Mars moving into Gemini. Mars is going to be in Gemini until July. I'm sorry, until September 4th. Now, uh, Mars is joining Jupiter. Remember, Jupiter's in Gemini already. We'll be here for a full year. This is your sixth house. Everyday activities Things are about to get busy for you. Things are about to get really Mars. Oh, yeah. But real like whistle while you work like you're a lot of passion, a lot of passion here. You're going to feel a lot of passion here. Remember, six houses also work uh, process of work, labor, hiring employees, things like that, things like that. But also health and fitness, you could feel a big ramp up. Remember Mars can be a little like, rawr. so, uh, you could feel that physical energy of it really going, you know, doing, you know, 40,000 mile runs a day, but this is going to be, you're going to feel Mars and Gemini, but just know it's passion. This is a lot of passion. This is a lot of passion. There is going to be this passion to communicate, okay, to a lot of mental stimulation. Remember, we're talking about Gemini here, so a lot of curiosity, a lot of communication, as in maybe you're going to be having important conversations. You're going to be having a lot of calls, uh, especially toward the things that you are really driven by right now. Remember, we're talking about Mars here, but it is a lot of passion. It is a lot of drive. It's like Sofia Vergara in Modern Family, just so much passion. But a lot of passion of the mind here. Remember, this is Gemini. We're talking about that rules the third house. So a lot of gaining knowledge. It, you could feel like a sponge, okay? Even at sometimes, you could feel like a vacuum, just absorbing a lot, absorbing a lot of information because you are going to be very stimulated. You're going to want to learn new things around this time, all right? Remember, uh, Mars and Gemini, I said this in your monthly forecast, restless energy around this too. So really have that focus on your passions. You can even think back to the end of 2022 when we had Mars and Gemini the last time. Uh, so it's been a couple years, all right? But remember that time we had Mars and Gemini for about seven months. <laughs> and that's because Mercury, uh, Mars went retrograde during that time for a few months. But but uh, you could, you know, pick up some patterns, themes, what happened around the end of 2022 for you, beginning of 2023, what was percolating up here. Now, here's the big day, Capricorn, July 21st. Now we get to Sunday. This is the full moon in your sign. You listen, I did that bit. I did a separate video on the full moons in Capricorn, the one that we had one in June as well. So two Capricorn full moons back to back, which is rare in itself. Just expect change. Remember, this one's at 29 degrees. This is a critical degree. It's an anoretic degree. This is a closeout. This is a full closeout. I explained this in that separate video that I made for you. But look at this day. Look at Sunday, July 21st. It's a, it's a traffic jam of aspects. 
this is going to be big. So first things first, this is, remember, all about that karmic release, okay? All about that karmic release. You really, really want to uh, have that moment. And it will be in terms of seeing things through a karmic lens. You're going through a new karmic cycle. Uh, it's conjuncting Pluto, this your, the, your full moon here, all right? So Pluto is death and rebirth. Remember that transformation. You've already got Venus and Mercury and Leo in your eighth house of transformation. Oh, yeah. This is you're going through some big changes, Capricorn. Now, the other thing is we are talking about Pluto here and then the eighth house as well. So that is money. That's shared resources, uh, investments, inheritance. Those could be big themes in your life around this time. Something closing out here uh, for some new cycle to begin. It could be bonuses. It could be royalties. There is definitely something here. Loans, right? So uh, it is Pluto too. So there could be some secrets that come out, some revelations as well. Well, Venus will sextile Jupiter this day. This is absolutely amazing. You got the two benefic planets working in your favor, working in your favor here, making things a lot easier for you, a lot nicer for you. Really, really great. Uh, the other thing is with actually, by the way, with Venus sextile Jupiter, with this type of aspect, you do want to avoid being overindulgent. Remember, I've, I've talked about this as well. Uh, and then you have Mercury squaring Uranus this day. So here's 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 what it is <laughs> you have an okay so mercury square uranus remember uranus is all about breakthroughs all right surprises you could receive really great news around this time you could receive news you could uh even have this breakthrough of the mind remember mercury's up here all right logic thinking processing intellect everything up here as well as communication but with a square like this yeah it could be some news that you uh don't expect coming remember this is uranus at play and so use this aspect to have the breakthrough that you need. All right. Remember, you create your reality. So I want you to really, really use this. And uh, it is a time to, you know, uh, with Mercury Square and Uranus, you know how some, you know, some of us belong in, or we're in group text chains. There could be a heated exchange going on this day. All right. You got a, you got a response fired up. Stop and ask yourself, trust your intuition, trust your intuition, ask yourself, is this going to make a difference? Is this going to make anything better? Okay, trust your intuition. It is like I've, I've said in some signs, uh, like editing yourself. I always have to edit myself, but this is one of those days where, uh, or aspects where you just may, it could go either way. Again, this is Uranus at play here. And, you know, I have had that image of, you know, it can go very like Nobel, uh, Nobel Prize winning scientists with those breakthroughs or or mad scientist, all right, like uh, Rick and Morty. Uh, and then you have the sun trining Neptune again at 29 degrees. This is that, ah, oh, beautiful. Trines are so auspicious, they're so wonderful. So there could be something here with communication where you are trusting your spirituality and your intuition. This is Neptune at play. And remember, this is Neptune retrograde at 29 degrees. Remember I said reality checks, that's what Neptune wants from you, all right? And so this is a day, especially because this is your full moon, where you could have this moment of, I know, I see through the fog, I know my path forward. This is going to be a really, really big day for you. And then lastly, the biggest thing of all, Mars training Pluto. This is major. This is something that nobody on Earth has experienced. Mars and Gemini and Pluto and Aquarius. Remember, Pluto moved into Aquarius this year, all right? Freshly new, freshly new. Mars just moved into Gemini. This has been 250 years, so nobody on this Earth has experienced this aspect unless you are a vampire, all right? So this is really great. This is two of the most powerful planets working in your favor. This is big picture energy. Uh, this is very supportive. It's let's get together. Let's get along. Let's make it happen. That type of energy, very innovative, very visionary is what this is. Now, remember, Pluto is in Aquarius in your second house of money. So again, there could be something here that you're taking action for during your full moon in terms of moving forward, in terms of money, all right? Because also don't forget Mars is in Gemini in your sixth house. So there's work here. It's everyday activities. Now, the second house is also so self-worth, self-value as well, even material possession. So even if you're not here for money, there could be this boost of confidence. You've got Mars here. you got Mars here. So this is you acting upon it because now you call the shots. You're the boss now. 
This aspect is supporting you. This is courage. This is empowerment. And this is taking that action. Remember, Mars wants you to take action. All right, so let's get started, Capricorn. Let's see what's going on for you for July 15th to the 21st um, for Capricorn and Capricorn Rising and Capricorn Moon. If you want to read for uh, any other placements in your chart, do you like my, sh my shuffling skills? <laughs> uh, you are absolutely welcome to. Now, Capricorn... Uh, and also with Mars trining Pluto, because it is such a strong aspect happening on your full moon, you are really going to feel this Capricorn. I really, really want you to take uh, advantage of all these wonderful aspects that are happening for you. Okay. And I did say, I think I mentioned in your monthly forecast, uh, if you saw La La Land, it's like Emma Stone at the beginning of the movie. She was a barista. She wanted to be that famous actress. She dreamed. She took action, and by the end of the movie, she was that famous actress. So, Capricorn, let's get to it. Let's see what's going on for you for July 15th to the 21st. All right. Capricorn, uh, I do a traditional cult across spread. If we need to pull clarifiers, you know that we will. Secondly, Capricorn, y'all are amazing. Oh, I can take my glasses off now. Y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for being here. I hope y'all are well. I hope you're having an amazing week. I hope everything's going well for you. Uh, let's get to it. I'm excited to see what's going on for you for this for this full moon. This is going to be a big one. It's going to be a big one. Oh, yeah, it is going to be a big one for you. Um, you're, uh, wow. This is going to be a big week, okay? Capricorn, this is going to be a big week, but you are good. You Everything that I literally just said is right here. I'm so, uh, you know, excited for you. I'm knocking, out, knocking things over. Um, can you see, by the way, that you have all major arcana and court cards? So when I say this is going to be a significant week for you, this is going to be big. This is going to be big. There are some big changes happening in your life. Let's get started. You've got the hanged man. Communicate. Communicate. But also, I'm getting a message of like internal communications, trusting your intuition, really having those, you know, inner dialogues with your higher self, like really tap into your intuitive side. Very spiritual card here with the hanged man, okay? What's really interesting, what comes after the hanged man? The death card, we'll talk about that. It's in your challenge area. However, the point I'm making is that you can see he's got a halo around his head, a smile on his face. He's ready for this transformation. He's ready to have this big change in his life, okay? Making these sacrifices, surrendering the things that no longer serve him well, all right? This is everything that I've been talking about with Saturn and Neptune retrograde, especially Saturn being your ruling planet, all right? So really going to have an impact on you, okay? So uh, really, really make that surrender. Surrender, and it seems like a lot of y'all are. It seems like a lot of y'all have been going through. That's the uh, feeling I'm getting. A lot of y'all have been going through big changes, really big experiences. You could have uh, even hit a point where you're like, okay, next, <laughs> next. What is, let's, let's keep going. Let's keep moving along. So I love this for you because there is that sense of enlightenment. You are seeing things. You may be looking at things in a different way, having different perspective on things. But remember, during Leo season, you will have this big transformation. We're moving into it next week. But also with Venus and Mercury, you're already in the process of it. You're already in the process of it. Now, you got the Queen of Cups. And the harder your spread. And so one thing that may have been a big theme in your life, partnerships, partnerships, relationships. Remember, we're still in cancer season. We had that new moon in cancer. We've had a bundle of planets in cancer. Cancer rules your seventh house of partnerships and relationships, your opposite sign. All right. So uh, the reason why I bring that up is because the Queen of Cups is cancer and she's sitting in the heart of your spread. And I really love that. OK, because this is all heart. All right. In the heart of your spread. This is the Queen of Cups. I call her the Princess Diana of Tarot. She has so much love to give. Okay. She knows the name of everybody in her kingdom. It doesn't matter if it's the, the emperor. It doesn't matter if it's a farmer. That's how much love she has, but also a lot of self-love as well. Okay. She does what her heart desires. She's in touch with her intuition. She's in touch with her emotions. You see her feet in the water. She water emotions. This is a lot of emotional intelligence. So there is almost this transcendent going from the hangman to the queen cups, queen of cups. That's big. That's really.
really, really big. So do what your heart desires. It seems like you will be doing what your heart desires. This is your full moon. This is your full moon. Have that transformation. Make that change that you want for yourself. Now, you have death in your challenge area. Very interesting here. The biggest message that's coming up is don't, 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 don't fight this transformation. Okay. Uh, seek it, seek it, seek it. If there is a part of your life where you're just like, okay, I want this to change and I want to grow here and I want to evolve here and I want to ascend here. Have those moments, have that, have those, look at this. Remember, you have a very significant week that's happening there, right? So you create your reality. I say that all the time. It, it, it You're going to feel very moved this week, especially with the Queen of Cups in the heart of your spread. Uh, again, all heart, working with a lot of that heart chakra, that heart energy, all right? So I I love this for you. Uh, death in your challenge area. So just be part of your trans You know, this is a transformational process, all right? This is, look at him moving toward the sun, moving toward the sun. The sun come out on the horizon. The sun is optimism, abundant, opportunity, vitality, health, growth, all of that great stuff. And you see that, uh, well, death is one of the best cards in, in, in tarot, by the way. And it just means this transformational process, that, uh, a significant one that you're going through. It is a major kind of, but it is in your challenge area. So really, really be part of this and work with this transformation that is happening in your life. All right. Now, uh, reason I say that is because you 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 really really taking this week by the horns you've got the emperor and the king of wands this is a lot of power this is a lot of power now the emperor in your crown yeah you're seeking it you are you know you are a cardinal sign you are a leader you're a known leader you're at the top of the food chain in your industry your company like this you're capricorns all right so emperor what i love about that is he is power this is authority he is the ruler not only of his kingdom okay or of his empire, like laying down the laws. He makes the laws, but also his destiny, the emperor, divine masculine, uh, mastery of self. All right. So you are seeking this transformation for it to, even in a spiritual sense, right? Look at this and to, uh, having it project in this external sense in your external world as well. All right. So I love this for you. This is absolutely amazing. He's got a lot of power. He's got a lot of passion. He's got the world in his hand. Now here's the other thing. He is the father of tarot. He is like the dad of tarot. Now, uh, you, uh, what the reasons why this is kind of significant is because the emperor is Aries and you even see the rams in his throne here. Now, remember I said Chiron and Aries this week and also the North Node, uh, your destiny. It's it's still in Aries for the rest of the year in your fourth house. So you've been having a lot of home activity, especially through cancer season as well. And so there could be this sense of being this big authority figure at home or, you know, in a f uh, family environment or even with a significant other, like really, really saying this is a 50 50 relationship. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is you just knowing that you're, you're where you belong in that seat of that throne of power. Now, speaking of power, you also got the king of swords. This is power of the mind. This is power of the mind. This is having, uh, it seems like a lot of y'all may be making some decisions this week, maybe uh, going through some decisions this week, especially with the king of swords. Now, it could have to do with money, all right? I remember I said Pluto and Aquarius. That's 20 years for you in your second house, just having a lot of empowerment when it comes to finances and money. And now you have the king of swords who is Aquarius, all right? Uh, the swords are the mental suit, by the way. So all about the mind. So, they, if, you know, and the emperor is, you know, a very smart emperor, all right, has that knowledge. He is full of knowledge, okay? And remember, you have the queen of cups too. Very intuitive queen. The most intuitive, all right? It's just, you've got a lot. So you've got that really great balance there. But what's happening here is that there's really going to be a lot of, I think that I mentioned earlier, a lot of mental stimulation, but there's a lot of things that you really want to just kind of like jump on now and take action with okay you're ready to strike this week all right it could be an agreement a partnership conversation uh there 
there is going to be something there where you are going to feel that power. All right. Now, you also have the Knight of Pentacles in your future. There you go with the, you know, finances I was talking about. Knight of Pentacles, money and wealth. And this is a knight who, knights, by the way, are all about action. They take action. Now, you see this knight, he goes the slowest. All right. But there's a reason why. And you would understand this because Saturn being your uh, ruling planet is all about the long term. And so this is saying you've planted your seeds and now you're going to reap your rewards. Now, no matter how long it takes, you're bringing that stability, that long-term energy, commitment energy, okay? So it could be even like actual investments in your physical world as well. It could be, uh, remember, uh, pentacles are your physical reality as well. So it could be a relationship, something that your heart really desires. Uh, anything here that is, you see the long term now and you're ready to build, you're ready to build. And it could even be your spiritual side as well. Look at what's happening across your cross. You have the hanged man attributed Neptune, by the way, uh, imagination, spirituality. And then you have the queen of cups here, the most intuitive queen. You you got the Knight of Pentacles, who's Virgo. Virgo rules your ninth house of spirituality. So this is this is great. Let's get to your staff. Capricorn. Oh my goodness. Look at all these core cards and major arcana. You are, this is going to be a powerful week for you. Uh, if you like this reading, by the way, it'd be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Let me know what's going on. Talk to me. Tell me, tell me what's going on. I really want to know what's happening for you during this full moon in your sign. And lastly, you know, I love you. Capricorn, y'all are amazing. Uh, yeah, you're fine. You're, mm -hmm. yep, you're good. Wow. 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 You know, it's really funny what I was going to say earlier. Uh, well, let me tell you now. Let me tell you now. You got the tower. OK, but where you got the tower, it's the first card in your staff. All right. So there's remember, I said uh, the Mars conjuncting Uranus is going to be a big thing. This is a card where a it's attributed to Mars. You see the lightning bolt. Uranus. Right. So uh, you can see that happening, playing out here. So. But here's the thing. Look at all this power. There's going to be two things that happen here. One, some of y'all could be uh, creating this tower moment. Remember, I said that breakthrough that you need, that breakthrough that you want. It could be that you really, really want this tower moment. It's going to bring you all this power, all this empowerment, but also this intuitive, like re being in your comfort zone. This is going to be something that some of y'all may be feeling already. OK, some of y'all may be feeling already. And it does seem like you have to break free from something. That's the other thing, something that you may have to break free from that. It's almost like you get your power back. I'm going to clarify that when you do that. Yeah, because there's something that you're bored with. And then you got the devil here as well. So something that you do have to let go, something that you and you know that the devil is attributed to Capricorn. So uh, very interesting, very interesting here. It could be a partnership, by the way. Remember, we talked about that. OK, we talked about that with the fact that we were in cancer season and uh, a lot of energy in seventh house of partnerships, relationships can be love, can be romance, can be career, can be whatever uh, relationship uh, resonates with you. Uh, but I see that here. Actually, you know what? You do have the full uh, four of cups. Uh, four of cups is attributed to moon and cancer. It is a cancer card. So seven of those partnerships and relationships. And then secondly, you see the couple here from the lover's card, right? Chained to the devil. So uh, there could be something that you are. Uh, this hour moment is helping you see something that you need to just hit the road jack and that's what this full moon in your sign is there for anyway remember culmination full moons illuminate all right 29 degrees closing shop this is it this is that karmic full stop all right so this is bad uh you know tendencies addictions vices codependency all of that all of that everything that is you know the devil's like an energy vampire so it's recognizing it but it does seem like something that you uh just four of cups is you know highly associated with like boredom and apathy uh and what so there may be something here that just really needs to right so uh and you also got the five of ones all right in your external factors area so it does seem like there's going to be a little bit of like and so it first things first if you do have kids there may be something there all right there may be something with your children where you know they're uh kind of you're you've got to step in and be like y'all just come on cut it out like that's kind of an energy that's coming through. Keep that in mind. Remember, you also have a lot of family energy. Could be uh, family members, could be uh, colleagues as 
as well. There's a lot of work related matters. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they're, you know, this is a challenge card, by the way, but it's the least challenging. It is just kids swinging their wands of the air. So a lot of egos at play here, but it's again, they're kids. All right. So there's a difference between kids with egos and like, you know, an adult with, an, with egos as well. But there are, uh, I'm gonna clarify that one for you. Yeah. It could be someone that's going through something, uh, you're you're someone on your journey that you're going through something with where you may not be seeing a eye to eye like i said before okay and it could be something where uh they're being a little bit obstinate maybe a little bit just like i'm not backing down and you're not backing down either and so there's gonna have to be some compromise all right so keep that in mind that may be something happening here i'll do one more clarify for you oh okay yeah and so you have that compromise. You work with those energies and uh, you become the better version, uh, ver uh, you know, best version of yourself and, and you know, vibrate at a high frequency. You're going to be fine. You got the queen of wands. So you got three ones here. So you definitely could be something with work when you look at what's happening here or family. All right. And the reason I say that one's highly associated with like enterprise career profession, uh, your ambitions and passions as well, but also remember uh queen of wands this is a lot of family energy that sh showed up that queen of wands uh is aries as well <laughs> so uh there really could be something there with your domestic sector all right but you see it as the queen of wands someone who attracts someone who people gravitate towards someone who has the full powers of the sun as indicated with the sunflower in her hand as well as in her throne okay uh that exists in the actual sun card so this is uh enormously special you also got the full you recognize this guy right you recognize this guy everything that you're seeking everything that's happening it seems like you're still moving into it because did you see your last week's reading when you got the full and your final outcome all right so now it's something that you're really really wanting now this big new journey it seems like you want to take this risk you want to take this really big risk into something uh that uh will bring you confidence and that's what this card is Look at him standing on the edge of the cliff. No care in the world. He's not even looking down. Okay. This is someone who has uh, total faith in himself, total faith in the universe, total faith in his journey. Okay. A lot of innocence in this card, but again, a lot of opportunity, abundance. You see the full abundance of the sun, actually. Now, lastly, Queen of Pentacles. You're going to go through the feels this week. You're going to feel a lot of that uh, energy. Uh, especially on a spiritual level okay and i say that because you got the you got three queens all right you got three queens you got the queen of cups queen of pentacles queen of wands okay this is pretty big this is pretty big uh now queen of pentacles just like the queen of cups has this really strong maternal side to her uh in the way that she comforts the people within her kingdom her family and right she takes care of them she has the resources too she is the richest queen and right so there is that uh maternal quality to her but it's you being able to create this world that you've always wanted for yourself as well again she has the resources to do that and lastly capricorn the queen of uh, Pentacles is Capricorn as well. All right. So I love this for you. So it's almost like you're being in, you know, your authentic self, you're, you're, you're being in the zone. Uh, you even see your symbol here, the sea goat in her throne, but there is a sense of growth. There is a sense of magic. There is a sense of, uh, taking that action to have this wealth in your life. Remember I said, Mars training Pluto, you want to take that action. And this card, there's a lot of similarities and references to to the magician all right card one which is a card of action you see you know the rose is a top you see they have pretty much the same outfit but flipped colors it's just uh or the colors flip backwards but anyway uh i won't get it too much into it you're good you're absolutely good there is going to be a moment it seems like that you really want you've got so much power look at all these major actually let's let's see look at, okay so you got the hangman you got the emperor you got even you know you got death it's in your challenge area but again 
again, just be part of your transformation. You may even feel a little squeeze based on the aspects that are happening, but you're still wanting that transformation, okay? Um, you've got the fool here. You've got the tower, but again, it does seem like it's leading to something really great for you. And that's the thing about the tower. Anyway, the star comes after the tower. The card of the star is aligning for you. Hopes, wishes, dreams. So whatever happens here, it happens for you, not to you, okay? Uh, and then you've got all these court cards. You've got the queen of wands, queen of cups, queen of pentacles. You got the king of swords. You got the knight. I mean, like, wow. <laughs> wow. This is going to be a big week. Capricorn, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments, tell me what's going on. And next week, we will talk more about, uh, you know, sun moving into Leo. We'll have a stellium in Leo with Venus and Mercury there as well. All right. So Capricorn, thanks so much. I will see you next week. Bye-bye.